Hi again, this is Cecilio Escobar from Centennial College's Equipment Room. I had a video all ready to go this week, but the team and I talked and we decided it was best just not to post it. I don't know if you've noticed, I don't know how you wouldn't have, but there are mass protests happening. This is the largest civil rights movement in history. Globally, people are protesting against systemic anti-black racism. The catalyst of these protests was the death of George Floyd which now the Minneapolis police officer, Derek Chauvin, is being charged with second-degree murder for. And here in Toronto, Regis Cartinsky Parquet, who died tragically in her home during an interaction with Toronto police. These protests are a direct result of the long history of black people being murdered by police officers. Honestly, to be silent right now is to be complicit in the violence. That's why I'm here making this video. I'm a visual learner, so I'm going to use film to talk about the injustices faced in black communities here in North America. Film is a powerful tool. It lets you see the world from another's perspective. All the films I'm going to talk about today are directed by black filmmakers and deal with the issues of injustice in their communities. Also, I tried to make sure these were accessible. They're either on Netflix or Crave, or you can pay five bucks and watch them on YouTube. I feel like if you watch the five films I'm going to suggest today, you'll have a good understanding of what has happened and what is happening to get us here today. So to start, let's talk about the 2014 film Selma. Selma is a story of a movement. The film chronicles the tumultuous three-year period in 1965 where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. led a dangerous campaign to secure equal voting rights in the face of violence and opposition. The epic march from Selma to Montgomery culminated in President Johnson signing the Voting Rights Act of 1965, one of the most significant victories for the civil rights movement. Director Ava DuVernay Selma tells the story of how the revered leader and visionary Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his brothers and sisters in the movement prompted change that forever altered history. The film moves continually between the public and the private realms. It seeks to explain what's at stake in voting rights. There are many ways in which black citizens are being deliberately excluded from the electoral rolls, denying them of many of their rights, including the ability to serve on juries. This has meant that some murderers are being unpunished when the perpetuators are white and the victims are black. You've probably heard of this classic film, Spike Lee's 1989, Do the Right Thing. This film looks at life in Brooklyn on a hot summer Sunday. As he does every day, Sal Fragioni opens the pizza parlor he's owned for 25 years. The neighborhood has changed considerably in that time, and now it's composed primarily of African Americans and Hispanics. His son Pino hates it there, and would like nothing better than to relocate the eatery to their own neighborhood. For Sal, the restaurant represents something that is part of his life, and sees it as part of the community. What begins as a simple complaint from one of his customers, who wonders why there are only pictures of famous Italian Americans on the wall when most of his customers are black, eventually disintegrates into violence as frustration, which brings out the worst in everyone. The next film is not a film. Well, it's, it's a docu-series, so it's like a four hour long movie. It's Spike Lee again with When the Levees Broke, a requiem in four acts, a 2006 documentary film about the devastation of New Orleans, Louisiana, following the failure of the levees during Hurricane Katrina. The documentary is based on news video footage and still photos of Katrina and its aftermath, interspliced with interviews. The interviewees include politicians, journalists, historians, engineers, and many residents of the various parts of New Orleans and its surrounding areas. And you get to see a young Kanye. George Bush doesn't care about black people. The film really captures the root cause of the disaster, namely race and class, and the institutional failures that botch the response and the recovery. This one I actually just watched this week. It's by a new director, Stefan Bristol, and was produced by Spike Lee. If you can tell, I really like Spike Lee. It's called See You Yesterday a sci-fi adventure grounded in familial love, cultural divides, and the universal urge to change the wrongs of the past. High school best friends and science prodigies, CJ and Sebastian spent every spare minute working on their latest homemade invention, backpacks that enable time travel. It's pretty cool. But when CJ's older brother Calvin dies after an encounter with police officers, the young duo decides to put their unfinished tech to use in a desperate bid to save Calvin. 
The film finds a striking yet natural balance between genre concept and the harsh reality that is achingly familiar for the people who have to navigate this every day. The film's power comes from its simplicity. Even after creating one of the most amazing breakthroughs in scientific history, she's still unable to fix the violence and racism in her own community. Honestly, if you're only gonna pick one movie to watch out of all of these, I would suggest it's this one. It's Eva DuVernay's documentary, 13th. But we're in a pandemic, what else are you doing? Watch all of them. The film explores the intersection of race, justice, and mass incarceration in the United States. It is titled after the 13th Amendment in the United States Constitution, adopted in 1865, which abolished slavery throughout the United States, and it involuntary servitude, except for as punishment for conviction of a crime. DuVernay contends that slavery has been perpetuated since the end of the American Civil War through criminalizing behavior and enabling police to arrest poor free men and force them to work for the state under convict leasing. Suppression of African Americans by disenfranchisement, lynching, and Jim Crow. Politicians declaring a war on drugs that weigh more heavily on minority communities and then by the 20th century meant the mass incarceration of people of color in the United States. She examines prison industrial complex and its emerging detention industrial complex, discussing how much money is being made by corporations from such incarcerations. Okay, so that's my list of films that you can watch to help educate yourself, but that's not the only thing you need to do to tackle anti-black racism. Educating yourself is very important. It gives you good context and understanding where all of this frustration is coming from. One of the most valuable things non-black folks can do that I actively try to do I look at myself and I look at how racism shapes my thinking and my actions. Yes, I'm trans, I'm queer, I'm Latinx, but I can still internalize and benefit from white supremacy and perpetuate it even without wanting to. Acknowledging our privilege and how we contribute to the problem can help us work towards stopping this cycle of injustice. Also, your actions don't need to be on the macro level. They can be on the micro. Like if you see racism in your family or in your community or with your friends, speak out about it. Of course, only if you feel safe, your safety is the most important. And use the platform that you have to speak out about this. That's why I'm doing this. I've linked more resources in the description if you wanna keep learning, as well as organizations and fundraisers you can donate to if you have the means to. If you can't, that's okay. Maybe just even share these posts on your social networks. And remember to do your part and dismantle racism from your heart and from your community. Until next time, take care of yourself and your loved ones. Bye.